National Anthem has been played, so let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Ohio Valley Insurance. Franklin Simpson up to bat first, the away team on the scoreboard. Warren East in the field to start this one out. Maggie McBrayer going to lead things off for the Lady Cats. Madison Davis, she's the starting pitcher for Franklin Simpson. Maggie, the designated player. Madison will be on deck to start this game. Gracie Arneman in left field. She'll bat third. Kaylee Tuck in the cleanup spot. She's catching for Madison Davis. Batting fifth at first base is Danielle Coates. At second base, batting sixth is Haley Fowler. Batting seventh in right field, Maddie Utley. At third base, batting eighth is Destiny Lohorn. Batting ninth in center field is Kasten Thomas. And not batting, but at shortstop is Lexi Holloman. In the field for Warren East, Katie Gardner getting the start in the circle. We went over some of her numbers during the pregame. We'll go over some more as the game goes on. Harley Stringfield catching for her. Jada Bays at first. Kaya Elkin at second. Haley Heimer at short. Shelby Trent at third. Outfield from left to right. Kelsey Sparks, Lucy Patterson, and Olivia Price. And with that, we are ready for the semifinals of the fourth region softball tournament. A rematch of the semifinals from a year ago. Franklin Simpson taking on Warren East. Katie Gardner in the circle gets her grip. Let's the first pitch rip. It's looked at inside and called strike one. It's rabbit behind the plate. Our good friend Terry Baldwin, you're going to have to wait two or three seconds to call for me to let you know if it's a ball or a strike. As the 0-1 is fouled back, so the count's now no balls and two strikes. Introduction of umpires brought to you by Compton and Compton Eye Care, located at 403 North College Street in Franklin. Visit the best optometrist office in Franklin as voted by the readers of the Franklin Favorite. They can be reached by calling 270-586-5181. O2 to McBrayer fouled off again. So it's still no balls, two strikes to McBrayer. Leading things off for Franklin Simpson in this one. Lady Cat's really going to have to concentrate on getting around quick. Yes. 0-2 oh, on its way. Mm. Looked at misses just low and away for ball one. And going to have to make Gardner work. She started in the first round against Russell County through 11 pitches in the first inning. Three strikeouts. Lady Raiders as a team, three innings, they strike out all nine Russell County batters. 1-2 yeah. up high and tight. And the count's now two balls, two strikes to McBrayer. Maggie has been an excellent leadoff hitter for Franklin Simpson since she moved up to that spot in the lineup, hitting 356 on the year as the 2-2 is looked at right over the plate for strike three. That's one of those pitches Brian Talley will tell you. It's too close to look at. Madison Davis now standing in a battle of one of the best pitchers, well, the best pitcher in the region, and one of the best hitters in the region. The two first team, all fourth region pitchers facing off in this one. Madison Davis, not too shabby as a hitter either. A 550 average now after the win yesterday against Barron County. First pitch to Davis inside for ball one. I'd like to see Madison square one up. She was one for three. Had one of the three Franklin Simpson hits against Katie Gardner in the first matchup between these two teams. Warren East won that game six to nothing back on May 6th. Gardner did get the start in that one for Warren East as the count is now two balls, no strikes to Davis. Open the count early. Arneman on deck. Gardner delivers the 2-0. This one is hit well. well in the center field. Back to the warning track is Patterson and off the wall. Davis rounds first, comes into second, standing up. Proving her spot on that first team, all fourth region. Madison Davis cracks a double off of the best pitcher perhaps in the state. The crazy, the crazy thing is, Tyler, if she hits that ball to anywhere else in the park, it probably goes over the fence. Oh, absolutely. Get a dead away center, and I think, uh, is that Lucy Patterson yes. right there? I think she may be banged up a little bit. Patterson, second team. All fourth region out there in center. They have perhaps the best, obviously, one of the best teams in the region. Them and South Warner looked at as the favorites in this tournament. In the outfield for them, in left field is Kelsey Sparks. She's second team all fourth region. Patterson in center, second team all fourth region. And then in right is Olivia Price, first team all fourth region. They've got four first team selections, two on the second team. Gracie Arneman now going to be stepping in for Franklin Simpson. 
She's got Davis standing at second as they're still checking on Patterson out there in center field. Lady Cats had just three hits against Warren East. It was a 6-0 win for the Lady Raiders. Franklin Simpson was in it all the way in the bottom of the fifth, had runners on second and third, tying run at the plate. Could not, though, bring those runners home as Patterson now comes up, appears to be okay, visibly still in a little bit of pain. Nothing like what we saw yesterday in terms of injury. You talk about something visibly being in pain. Yes. Lily Brody for Barron County took a ball off the bat of Maggie McBrayer right in the gut, and kudos to her, continued to pitch in that one. As now Sharika Kitchen's going to come to run in at second for Davis, so she stands in scoring position for Gracie Arneman. 380 average on the year. Gracie 21 RBI, good for fourth on this Lady Cats team. And Kaylee Tuck standing on deck. Tyler, well, we've got a break. I'll let everybody know they're listening to 1220 WFKN Franklin, Kentucky. Beautiful station identification. Well, uh, you know, I'm here for something. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. I mean, I got to let you get some airtime. Right, you know? right, right. Everything's now set. We're ready to play. Arneman in the left-handed batter's box. First pitch swung on and missed. Fastball up high. Hate to chase at that one, but Gracie does. And it's no balls, one strike. Arneman one for three in the first matchup between these two teams. As Gardner taking her time, as you will see her do, Gracie steps out. Gardner in that first matchup, like I said, had the start against Franklin Simpson. Gave up the three hits. Walked one batter, so that's more than usual, but struck out 15. Yeah. 0-1, swung out once again, fastball up high for strike two. Did throw 120 pitches in that one, so Lady Cats made her work a bit, and that's going to be a big key here this afternoon. Obviously, Katie Gardner not the one to get tired. She's thrown nearly 2,000 pitches this year as the 0-2 swung on and missed. Once again, out of the zone, but Gracie chases. And there are now two down here in the top of the first for Kaylee Tuck. Lady Cats leader in RBI with 37 was intentionally walked yesterday twice with runners on second and third. Danielle Coates on deck made the Trojanettes pay once. Assume you won't see that here with Katie Gardner in the circle. Gardner deals the first pitch. It misses high and tight for ball one. Kaylee 418 average on the air, as I mentioned, leads the team in RBI with 37. Also leads this Lady Cat squad with five home runs. Nearly had another one yesterday. 1-0 on the way. This one looked at again, but over the plate for strike one. Yeah, that was a ball yesterday that I think everybody, for sure in the press box when she hit it, thought it was uh, going to get out of here. And a lot like the one Madison just hit, if Kaylee hits that one yeah. to right, it probably travels out. 1-1 one, one looked at high. Counts now two balls and one strike. I can say with a lot of confidence, Gardner has already thrown more pitches than she did yesterday. Yeah. Just 11 against three batters. Sharika Kitchen standing on second. The hit from Davis was the first base run of the Lady Raiders have given up in this Region 4 tournament. 2-1 to Tuck. Looked out on the inside part of the plate. Evens the count up at two balls and two strikes. Kaylee, all fourth region honorable mention. Just a sophomore. A big moment here. 2-2 two -two count, two away, runner on second. Gardner has the pitch, delivers it, fouled off towards Danielle Coates in the on-deck circle. Kaylee that time just trying to protect the plate. She's done a good job of it. Just four strikeouts this year in 110 at bats. That's efficient. Yeah, efficiency. That's the word I would use for that. Still a 2-2 count. Tuck hugging the plate. Pitch on its way from Gardner, fouled back again. You know, a lot of times you talk about the word cadence in terms of quarterbacks under center and such. Harley Stringfield and Gardner have their own cadence, I've noticed. Yes. Stringfield will slap her glove, and Gardner just sits there kind of messing with the ball, and as soon as Stringfield slaps the glove, automatically, Katie seems to be ready to go. There's the slap. Gardner ready to go as she has been all inning long. It's the third strikeout of the inning. So Davis gets a double off the wall, but Franklin Simpson can't take advantage. Warren East up 
in the bottom of the inning. You're listening to Lady Cat Softball on WFKN. In left field to follow her, Lucy Patterson will come after that. She's in center field for the Lady Raiders. Haley Heimer, the best leadoff hitter arguably in the region. A 426 average paces a Warney squad that has 38 home runs with her 11. <clears throat> and that was just in the regular season. First pitch from Davis bounces off the plate for ball one. They haven't updated their stats since the regular season ended, which is quite odd. They've done a good job all year of yep. keeping up with the numbers. Unusual for a program of that magnitude. Absolutely. 1-0 misses away for ball two. Of course, we do still have the wins and losses. 31 and two on the year That's under really the head coach. That's really all the statistics right. you need. Absolutely. <laughs> Although those two losses both coming in the last five games, as the 2-0 misses away for ball three. So Heimer, who also leads the team in walks, she's got 13 in the regular season, has a 3-0 count against Davis. 3-0 looked at right across the plate for strike one. Haley Heimer, one of those four off First team, fourth region selections as the 3-1 is in the dirt. Not the start you wanted if you're Madison Davis in the circle. A five-pitch walk of Haley Heimer. Now Kelsey Sparks stands in. She is one of those slapper types out of the left-handed batter's box. A 537 average. So clearly excels at it. 58 hits, only six though for extra bases. As the first pitch from Davis swung on and missed for strike one. Obviously there are a lot of young ladies that are very talented at that slap hitting, but mm -hmm. it always seemed to me like it'd be hard to hit a moving ball while you're moving. It's hard enough know? to hit it while you're standing. Right. Right. <laughs> Especially in softball when the mound is closer to the plate as the 0-1 bunted out. up in the air in foul territory. Tut gets under it, she's got it. And like Brian Talley said, a really big out against a hitter in Kelsey Sparks. More than half the time she steps up at the plate. She's reached, not this time though. But now Lucy Patterson will step in. Exactly a 500 average during the regular season. Very, very, very similar at the plate to Kelsey Sparks. Gets her move, fouls back the first pitch for strike one. Of course, Lucy had a collision with the center field wall. Was, be, was checked on for a while out there in center. Appears to be, though, okay as she stayed in and now stands in with one away. Heimer at first. 0-1 count to Patterson. Both teams scoreless here in the bottom of the first. 0-1 from Davis. Fouled back again. The counts now no balls, two strikes. Davis making her 29th appearance in the circle on the year. 24th start, 14-10. A 2.71 ERA has been sterling. Over 200 strikeouts after yesterday. 0-2 looked at outside. A good pitch location with an 0-2 count. Good pitch location regardless to a slapper. But the count's now one ball and two strikes. One, two on the way from Davis. This one hit into center field. Thomas giving Chase a leaping catch, but she can't come down with it. Coach McKinney going to hold Heimer up at third. And Patterson is in standing up at second. And the Lady Raiders are in business here in the bottom of the first. Two runners in scoring position. Just one away for Jada Bays. Starter at first base for Warren East. Second on the team in RBI on the year. She had 45 in the regular season. A golden opportunity here and a big spot for Madison Davis. She was golden in these spots yesterday. Yep. We'll see what she can do here. Outfield is back. First pitch looked at on the outside corner for strike one. Her 15 and 10 record, 2.58 ERA. Was first team all fourth region as a pitcher joining Katie Gardner on that first team. 
Oh, one hit hard, but foul down the left side for strike two. She jumped all over that one. May have heard that one through our microphones. So fortunately, that one drifts foul. Bays, she just looks like a softball player. I mean, yes, she does. Just an athlete. You can just tell she's an athlete. Just, yes. You know, her body build and. 0-2 oh, on the way. Swing on and missed. So this time, Brian Talley, she looks like a strikeout victim for Madison Davis and a big one here in the bottom of the first. Well, my plan was there, Tyler, talk her up a little bit. <laughs> there you go. And usually the way my life goes, I, I say something positive, <laughs> something bad is going to happen. So it, no offense to Jada Bays, but my curse. Understandable. You don't have to talk Olivia Price up. The numbers do it themselves as the first pitch from Davis misses away for ball one. A 433 average, 54 RBI in the regular season to pace this Warren East team. 12 double, seven home runs. They've still got two runners in scoring position as Heimer stands at third, Patterson at second. Two away though now after the strikeout of Bays. 1-0 from Davis looked at, low and outside for ball two. See if I can find us a score from the fourth region baseball tournament. 2-0 bunted foul for strike one. And this is a situation where we saw yesterday, we mentioned Kayla Tuck walk twice with runners on second and third. You would like to walk a batter like Price in this situation, but this Lady Raiders lineup just too good up and down. A team average up over 400 during the regular season. 1-1 one, one from Davis, popped up. Make a play. Fowler, under it, she's got it. Madison Davis works her magic again, and after one, both teams are scoreless. You're listening to Lady Cat Softball on WFKN. At the time were the third and fourth rounds for Franklin Simpson as the Lady Cats went on to stun Barron County, seven to three in the first round of this fourth region tournament. We'll see what she can do here against Katie Gardner Three strikeouts in the first inning. First pitch to Coates looked at high for ball one. Madison Davis doubled off the center field wall. Sharika Kitchens came in to run for her, eventually stranded there at second. South Warren leads Allen County eight to two, top of the sixth in baseball. We know firsthand how good that South Warren team is. We do. As the 1-0 looked at on the inside corner for strike one. South Warren, of course, ended Franklin Simpson baseball season a bit earlier than I think we all expected yesterday, a 2-0 win over the Wildcats. Fortunately, though, Lady Cats still playing. 1-1 one, one misses away to Danielle. Makes it two balls, one strike. A great crowd on hand. Mm -hmm. Not going to give the split of fans. No. It's a bit of... <laughs> It's a bit swayed as of right now as the 2-1 fouled out of play for strike two. When I got here, and I, you know I like to get to games really early. I was here at about 5 o'clock, 5.05. actually rolled in just as the Franklin Simpson bus pulled in, mm -hmm. and already the Warren East section completely oh, yeah. full. Yeah. They love their Lady Raiders softball, and for good reason. Reigning Region 4 champs. 2-2 two -two to Coates. Popped up. Gardner under it at the edge of the circle. She's got it. And Coates is retired for the first out here in the second. I guess one positive, it's the first out not by strikeout of the entire region tournament so far for Warren East. And who makes that put out? Katie Gardner. Of course, Gardner does it herself. So I guess still the pitcher has recorded every out for Warren East so far. Haley Fowler looking to change that. And she looks at the first pitch low for ball one. Madison Davis had the first hit, was the first base runner period to reach against Warren East as Lady Raiders coming off a dominant 18 to nothing win in three innings yesterday over Russell County. 1-0 to Fowler. Lee called on the outside corner for strike one. It is. Oh, Rabbit back there behind the plate. It's a 1-1 count to Fowler. Maddie Utley on deck. 
one one looked at once again across the plate for strike two was no doubt about that one no strike. one away here in the top of the second a one two count now to Fowler <coughs> One, two on its way. Hit right there back is. up the middle and Haley Fowler doing what we saw yesterday and what was the key for Franklin Simpson, those out of nowhere moments. Maddie Utley coming up now. She sparked one of those out of nowhere moments in the top of the second. Utley, Lowhorn and Thomas, his Lowhorn stands on deck out of the seven, eight, nine hole, all reach. Utley and Lowhorn eventually come in to score. Destiny and RBI single as well. We'll see what Maddie can do here. She's got Fowler standing at first with one away. Takes the first pitch on the inside corner for strike one. It was Danielle rather came in to score. Destiny got to third. That top of the second inning completely changed the outlook of yes. that game. Can the Lady Cats do the same here? 0-1 oh, to Utley. Oh. Found, I believe it went off of Maddie. It did. I believe it was going to hit her if she didn't swing it. Yeah. It was definitely inside. Kudos to the Lady Cats. They've been aggressive, and they're making contact. A lot of foul balls. It hasn't been great contact, but more so than Gardner has been used to giving up. It's an 0-2 count to Utley. Gardner winds, deals, delivers. It's high. Goes over the head, rather off the glove of Stringfield. It was over her head as well, but poked the glove up, tried to make the play, couldn't. Bring it in off the edge of the glove, so Fowler moves over to second on the wild pitch. Another thing you really don't see no. from Katie Gardner. And the count's now one ball, two strikes to Utley. She was going for that fastball up high. We talk about it all the time with an 0-2 count. Just missed it a bit too high. Let's see what she comes here with the 1-2 count to Utley. Pitch on the way. Get in there. Loop to left, and it's down. For her. Coach Collins, oh, leaving no, Fowler no. home now, brings her back. A good decision would have been thrown out. Man, I tell you, that shortstop got to that ball right yes. now. I thought she would score easily. There's a reason Haley Heimer is first team all fourth <laughs> region. But out of the blue, Haley Fowler, Matty Utley, back-to-back -back singles. We played one and a third. Franklin Simpson has already matched their hit total from the first matchup between these two teams. Destiny Lohorn stepping in. I mentioned she had that RBI single yesterday. She's got runners on the corners here with one away. And now the catcher, Stringfield, going to go talk to Gardner. Call Gives her a few signs, yeah. Calls a play. This isn't quite like basketball. We don't have Coach <laughs> D right beside us to tell him what they're running. No Blazers this time, I don't and, think. And no leg stomping the floor. Right. So, you know. Just a lot of movement I can't quite comprehend. First pitch, Lowhorn squares to bunt. Hmm. Ball goes straight back. She's moving her arm. I think she got the worst part of that. Yeah, she definitely did. <clears throat> Counts now 0-1 as that ball went foul. Lowhorn up to 11 RBI after the one she got yesterday. 259 average. I'd like to make that 11 a 12 here. It's an 0-1 count, one away. Runners on the corners here in the top of the second for Franklin Simpson. Squares to bunt again, fouled off again. Gardner almost, almost throws too hard to bunt. Yeah. If you make contact and it stays fair, you feel like it's going to go straight to a fielder. But now you would assume out of the picture with an 0-2 count to Lowhorn. She calls time, steps out of the box. We've seen Coach Cottle stick with the bunt call with 0-2 counts a few times this season. I don't think you risk it here. As Destiny's got an 0-2 count. Pitch from Gardner, popped up. It's gonna stay in the infield. Bays is under it, she's got it. A big second out for Gardner. And now the first out, not recorded by a Warren East pitcher, Franklin Simpson just filling up the record books with accomplishments so far in this one. We'll see if Kasten Thomas can add to what has been, in that young lady's mind, a historic run here at the fourth region tournament. First pitch looked at inside for ball one. She roped one down the right field line an RBI double yesterday in that second inning. Do the same thing here, and there's a run on the scoreboard. 1-0 misses high and away for ball two.
just cased in sixth RBI on the year. Has only hit now in 16 games. She's got a 2-0 count right now. Pitch inside, fouled off. And that's another one of those pitches. Franklin Simpson has <laughs> swung it a lot. If it's been close to the plate, they've swung. Mm -hmm. She takes that one. It's probably a 3-0 count. Yep. But so far, the aggressiveness has paid off. It's a 2-1 count. Pitch to Thomas. This one swung on and missed. That would have been ball four. Yep. But instead, it's now a 2-2 count. Two away. Runners on the corners. Here in the top of the second, Franklin Simpson looking to break through. Gardner deals the 2-2. Swung on and missed. And the Lady Cats, just like the Lady Raiders, strand two runners on. And Warren East will come up to bat in the bottom of the second. Both teams scoreless. You're listening to Franklin Simpson softball on WFKN. Second, Franklin Simpson already with three hits, although they've stranded all three. Each team scoreless as Warren East stranded runners on second and third. A great job by Madison Davis to get out of that jam. Struck out Jada Bays and then popped up Olivia Price, two of the best hitters in the region. As the first pitch from Davis to Young is looked at on the outside corner for strike one. Young in the regular season, a 341 average, 409 team average for Warren East as she hits the first pitch well into right field, Utley giving chase back near the warning track and a beautiful over the shoulder grab for the first out here in the bottom of the second. You talk about a revelation. Maddie Utley out there in right has grown so much over the course of the season. This team as a whole has grown an incredible amount over the course of the season. I don't know if I've ever seen a team grow this much, but it's incredible. I thought she came in too far initially yeah. and she recovered well to get back there to the warning track and make the play. Katie Gardner, the pitcher for Warren East, getting a chance to help her own cause here in the batter's box. Looks at the first pitch high for ball one. 348 average at the plate for Gardner. 25 RBI on 24 hits. 1-0, a breaking ball that doesn't quite get back down into the zone, and it makes it two balls, no strikes to Gardner. Kaya Elkin stands on deck. One away here in the bottom of the second. 2-0 from Davis, popped up, goes over our heads. And a play for strike one, a GG's Cupcakes yes. foul ball. You know, we don't see Brian Davis, but maybe, just maybe, he snuck in and he's, he's chasing well the foul be. balls for some GG's Cupcakes. He very well could be. Hashtag not an ad on our part. <laughs> we promise. But it, GG's, if you want to be a sponsor. Absolutely. We're not saying we're opposed to it not right. being an ad, as the two on miss is high for ball three. Let's just say we would love to take the not out of that hashtag not an ad. Yes. It's a 3-1 count to Gardner. Breaking ball hangs up high. Already the second walk for Madison Davis in this one. She walked the leadoff batter, Heimer. Gardner trots over to first. Assume a courtesy runner will come in. There is. Courtesy runner number four, four. Ryan Wilson. Courtesy number or runner number four, O'Brien Wilson. She stands at first. Kaya Elkins stands in. Two big at bats here if you're Madison Davis. The eight and nine hole coming up. One away, runner on first. Each team looking for their first run in this one. Elkin stands in. Squares to bunt, drops one right back to Davis. Throw over to first is in time. May have had the play at second if she wanted to gamble, but makes the safe throw over to first. Made a smart play. Yes. In a game like this, you can't really afford to take that gamble, at least not right now. So Elkins retired on the fielder's choice. Courtesy runner Wilson moves over into scoring position at second. Now at the bo bottom of the order with the third baseman, Shelby Trent. 214 average. Looks at the first pitch over the plate for strike one.
Trent was one for two the last time these two teams faced off, and that one hit was a double. Also drew a walk. She was in the nine hole in that game, too. 0-1 oh, from Davis, looked at high for ball one. In fact, it was the bottom of that Warren East order that really got the job done for the Lady Raiders in that one. Danielle Coates, the starter for Franklin Simpson, did a great job against the top of the order. As the 1-1 is looked at just high for ball two. Just so much depth in this Warren East lineup. No easy outs. Absolutely not. It was the same way with Barron County yesterday, so Madison's been there, done that. 2-1 count. Pitch fouled off into the backstop for strike two. So now two balls, two strikes, two away. Wilson standing at second. Madison Davis looking to hold Warren East scoreless through two. Two-two from Davis, popped up. It's gonna go over our heads here in the press box. The count still two and two to Trent. Haley Heimer standing on deck at the top of the order. That's why this out is so important. As Davis unwinds with the two-two, hit over to third, diving effort from Lowhorn, not enough. Fielded well in left field by Arneman. So Wilson is held up at third, but now runners on the corners for Haley Heimer. The luxury of having so many good hitters in this Warren East Lady Raider lineup is that you can put somebody like Haley Heimer there in the leadoff spot, not your traditional leadoff hitter, as she leads the team in home runs. But now, a golden opportunity for Warren East once again. Although with two away, we'll see what Davis can do. First pitch to Heimer, a breaking ball that hangs up high for ball one. It's the second hit Davis has given up to go along with those two walks. And a strikeout of Jada Bays back in the first. one to Heimer, fouled back into the screen for strike one. It's a 1-1 one -one count to Heimer. Wilson stands at third. Trent, after the single, stands at first. Two away here in the bottom of the second. 1-1 one -one from Davis, misses high and away. Trent just going to walk to second. Might should have tried the throw down there. She literally, when I say she walked, she went for a Sunday stroll. But she now stands there after, I guess, the stolen pace. Yeah. 2-1 to Heimer. Check swing. You got to call that one. It is. <laughs> believe it was over the plate anyways. And once again, a 2-2 count. Deuces Weidel. Two on, two out, two two count. Here in the bottom of the second. Davis delivers the two two. This oh. one hit well in the left. Arneman giving chase. And she's got it. Falls down that she hang on. She did. Wow. Another one of those balls, just like the hit from Tuck yesterday, hangs up and left. Madison Davis, I said in the first she worked her magic, waves her wand. Does it again here in the bottom of the second and after two. Both teams, Brayer leading things off. A packed house here at the WKU softball field. Fans now piling in to the parking structure out in left field. That's because there's not a seat left in the stands. As Katie Gardner gets set to work again here in the top of the third. Already four strikeouts for Gardner, but she's given up three hits in two innings of work as the first pitch to McBrayer catches the outside corner for strike one. Franklin Simpson in the first matchup between these two teams, the lone matchup between these two teams back on May 6th, just had three hits in all of that one. They've already got three already here today. 0-1 to McBrayer, a check swing, appeal down to first, ruled no swing. So it's now one ball, one strike to McBrayer. Maggie was one of those four strikeout victims as she led off the game with a strikeout. 
1-1, chopped softly, picked up by the shortstop, Heimer, throws a dart over to first, and McGraham is retired to lead off the top of the third. Madison, Madison Davis, Davis now stands in. She was a couple of feet yep. from knocking one out over the center field wall. She hits it to right, it's off the scoreboard. I'll be interested to see uh, if she gets much to hit here. The outfield is back just a few feet in front of the warning track. That hit ended up being a double for Davis as the first pitch from Gardner looked high, but I believe it's called strike one and it is. Generous call that time. From old rabbit behind the plate, Terry Baldwin makes the count 0-1 to Davis. Gardner deals the 0-1, this one's low. Evens the count up at one ball, one strike. Gracie Arneman stands on deck. As the 1-1 to Davis is lasered down the left field line but drifts foul. And the count's now one and two. Jumped out in front of that one. But it falls for the second strike. Madison one for three the first time these two teams faced off. One, two count right now. One away in the top of the third. Both teams scoreless. One, two, fastball up high. Madison chases. It's Gardner's fifth strikeout. Second out here in the top of the third. Gracie Arneman now standing in. She was one of those five strikeouts as Gardner had three in the first. Davis's double sandwiched in between. Kaylee Tuck on deck. She was the other strikeout. As Arneman stands in with two away, looks at the first pitch high for ball one. Gracie's had an issue with strikeouts. Second highest strikeout total on the team now with 20. We'll see if she can adjust in her second time around against Gardner. Hits one well down the right field line, but foul. This is a park, as we've been able to tell, made for left-handed hitters. If you can pull one down that right field line, it'll catch a little bit. Hit it out to left, and, well, it'll be pushed right back. Yeah. Wind blows out to the right here mm -hmm. most of the time. 1-1 one, one to Arneman. Gardner deals, swung on and missed. Makes the count one ball, two strikes. I would just love to know, and there's no way to know this, but just the percentage of her pitches, period, that are swings and misses. I'm sure it's insane. So it's very, very high. 1-2 from Gardner. This one is swung on, hitting the foul territory, but in play. Third baseman, Trent is under it. She's got it. Lady Cats go down one, two, three here in the top of the third. Franklin Simpson and Warren East both scoreless. You're listening to Lady Cats Softball on WFKN. Historic upset in this one. We would have that game for you here on WFKN starting around 6-15. Kelsey Sparks leading things off. It's 2-3-4 for Warren East here in the bottom of the third. As the first pitch to Sparks is looked at high for ball one. Kelsey flew out in foul territory to the catcher, Tuck, back in the first inning. Davis deals the 1-0. This one looked at all the way. Looks like a good pitch, and it is. There's the call <laughs> for strike one. At that time, I didn't even hear the grunt. And Davis immediately asked, is it rabbit? Oh, absolutely it is. 1-1, one, one, foul back. What's the phrase, Tally? And this is, I, I don't mean this in a bad way at all, but the, there's a phrase about being a fool. It's like rather to, to look like a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Better to be, from, better to be silent and be thought a fool yeah. than to open your mouth For and rabbit, remove it's all just, doubt. It's the complete opposite. <laughs> rather to open your mouth and be thought not to be rabbit than to open your mouth and remove every single bit of doubt as the one, two misses for ball two. I've said it many, many times. Not a bad umpire at all. Just nope, can't hear him. He's not. <laughs> it's a 2-2 two -two count to Sparks. You Maybe he'll get, take that compliment right here. You don't get the bad ones in the fourth region tournament. Absolutely not. Sparks steps out of the box, takes a practice swing, now steps back in. It's a two-ball, two-strike count here in the bottom of the third. Pitch swung on and missed. 
Davis with her second strikeout. Balances out those two walks. She's given up two hits as well. And a big strikeout to start the third. Lucy Patterson now stands in. She doubled back in the first. That double got Haley Heimer over to third. Both of them, though, were stranded. Madison Davis has stranded two Lady Raiders in scoring position each inning so far in this one. First pitch to Patterson on the outside corner for strike one. And that's the thing about, I'll go on about Rabbit real quick. His grunt even sounds like he's saying ball. Yeah. So you can't really, you just got to kind of wait. 0-1 from Davis. This one low and away to Patterson. Evens the count up at 1-1. One and one. Lucy, a very talented multi-sport athlete, just a sophomore for the Lady Raiders. As the 1-1 one, one popped up in the infield, Holloman's got it. Couple of big outs here to start the third. Franklin Simpson came up with 1-2-3, went 1-2-3. Warren East with just as good of an opportunity going 2-3-4. Can Madison Davis repay? What Katie Gardner did against the Lady Cats in the top half of the inning. Jada Bay is standing in. She struck out back in the first. Looks at the first pitch, a breaking ball. That misses apparently, I guess, a little bit high for ball one. It must looked really high. good. Yeah. Said that a few times yesterday when it missed like that. Must have been high just from our vantage point. It can be tough at times to tell. As the 1-0 popped up again. Holloman near the outfield grass has it. So after Franklin Simpson goes one, two, three, Lady Raiders do the same and through three, we're scoreless. You're listening to Franklin Simpson softball at the fourth region tournament on WFKN. Yesterday that I felt like whoever won our game would be in the final. And that, unfortunately for the Wildcats, how it has played out. Likely an all 14th district title game in baseball. Franklin Simpson trying to prevent that from happening here on the softball diamond. As we enter the top of the fourth, mm -hmm. Kaylee Tuck leading things off. A breaking ball that time from Katie Gardner. Tuck swings and misses just to be kind. And it's no balls, one strike. Tuck leading off, Danielle Coates on deck. 0-1 popped up, Gardner comes and gets it and drops it. Drop. Wow! Wow! That's why you always wow. keep running. And let me say this, Brian Talley, you mentioned it. I'm not going to say this is a factor at all. As good as Katie Gardner is, perhaps she looked over in between innings and saw Emma, Marker, Emma Markham warming up, and she's thinking, there's a zero on the scoreboard. Why would I come out? Comes in there, maybe that's in the back of her mind. I'm not saying that's the case. But little things like that, you figure it's got to be something for her to make that mistake as good as she has been over the course of her entire career. A costly mistake. Can Franklin Simpson take advantage? Shelby Cottle comes in to run it first. Danielle Coates standing in. A key two-run double yesterday. I'd like her to lace one here and Shelby to turn on the Jets. She That's did. just one of those plays that you just don't expect. I mean. And Danielle popped up to her to start the second. Yep. Exact same play, a routine play. Katie made it that time as the first pitch hit hard oh. in the left, but right into the glove of the left fielder Sparks. And that's another one of those things we've talked about. You hit one in the left, it's not going to carry at all. But it was very well hit. And that's something we talked about over the break. Franklin Simpson making contact. They have not been intimidated at all at the plate. Unfortunately, that time the contact goes right to the left fielder Sparks for the first out. Fowler standing in, tries to bunt, sends it right back into the screen for strike one. Haley singled back in the second, but almost figure you want her swinging the bat again here. Hattie Utley stands on deck. She singled as well. A one to Fowler misses high. That's one of the major differences you see in baseball and softball. Not a lot of bunting in baseball with one out. Uh, with a runner at first, right. for sure. Uh, but softball, you know, one out, two outs, doesn't matter. Absolutely. So. A bunt, half the time, is you can get a single off of it. Yeah. 
as the 1-1 Fowler squares to bunt again, but this time takes it for strike two. Anything can happen in the game of softball, especially here at the fourth region tournament. Heck, we just saw it on the ball that Gardner dropped. We saw it all day yesterday, at least in our hour and a half up here in the booth, as the 1-2 to Fowler chopped, goes over Gardner's head, picked up by the second baseman. She makes the tag. Throw over to first is not in time. It was dropped by Bays, but Fowler had beat out the throw anyways. So she's able to reach on the fielder's choice. And just unfortunate that the ball was hit where it was because if it's not hit exactly in that spot as it led the second baseman Elkin over a bit towards second base, if she's not able to make that tag, we've got runners on first and second with just one away. Instead, now two away. For Maddie Utley, she hits one le well in the left, but it's going to hang up. And the left fielder, Sparks, doesn't have to move a step. Franklin Simpson once again strands a base runner after three and a half. We're still scoreless. You're listening to Franklin Simpson softball on WFKN. Yesterday beating Barron County 7-3. to three. A Trojanette offense that was averaging 11 runs per game. Good for the top spot in the state. Olivia Price leading things off here for Warren East. She swings and misses at the first pitch for strike one. Speaking of best in the state, she's one of the best in the state. A team leading 54 RBI in the regular season, seven home runs, 12 doubles, a 433 average. The one knock on her strikeouts led the team with 20. 0-1 looked at. Tuck tries to frame it on the outside corner but can't get the call. So the count's now one ball, one strike. Lively crowds on both sides as the 1-1 one -one is hit well in the right. Hang on. Back at the warning track is Utley and she just misjudged it and dropped it. Rounding second, going to third. And in there is Price off the air. We saw it yesterday, six Franklin Simpson errors. We knew that Franklin could not afford to make those mistakes today through three innings had not. That one huge. As Price now stands at third. Emma Young standing in. Madison Davis has wiggled her way out of some jams that I don't know if any other pitcher in the region could get themselves out of. This right here gonna be one of those. As Price I believe being checked on over third, I guess the headband must have come off. She's putting on a new one. Doesn't appear to be any kind of pain anywhere. She's just standing over there, puts her glove back on, now puts the helmet on, so she appears to be ready to go. Just readjusted the glove, took the headband off, put it back on. So she stands at third after the error out in right. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. Emma Young standing in. She flew out to right in her first appearance. Can Madison Davis do it again? It's a tall task mm -hmm. here. Nobody out. First pitch from Davis inside. Called ball one. The pitcher Gardner stands on deck. It's so a 1-0 count. Pitch from Davis, swung on and missed for strike one. One one on the way, squares to bunt. It's a good squeeze. one to squeeze. Davis throws it over to first. Price comes in to score. Beautifully executed squeeze play as Price was running all the way. They get the out at first, but Price comes in to score and Warren East breaks through first. They lead it one to nothing. Gardner now stands in. Now nobody on, the one out after the throw over to first. Davis may have had a chance to make the play at the plate. I don't think so. But I, I still think the right decision there is to make the throw over to first as the first pitch popped up left side. 
giving chases Arnhem, and she drops it, and they're going to rule it foul. Foul ball. Coach McKinney does not agree. Coach McKinney thinks it hit the line. We saw one of those yesterday that we believe hit the line. I think that one was foul. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what we think, Coach McKinney thinks, although his opinion probably holds a lot, a lot more respect than ours yeah. as much as he's done. Ultimately, it drops for strike one. <laughs> but nevertheless, an out that you gotta make right there. Right. That ball has to be caught. Two of those now in this inning. 0-1, hit the short, Holloman. Just takes a little hop to her left, makes the play, picks it out of the air for the second out here in the bottom of the fourth. Look for a second there, that drop was really gonna come back to bite because if Lexi doesn't yep. make that play, that ball's in the gap. Instead, now two away, bottom of the fourth, nobody on. Kaya Elkin stands in, hitting to a fielder's choice back in the second. First pitch from Davis misses away for ball one. Madison Davis now at her, in her two days here at the Region 4 tournament has given up four runs, just one of those earned, and that was really a throwaway run in the seventh inning of that win against Barron County. 1-0 check swing, I believe it's gonna be called ball two, and it is. Appeal down to first, ruled no swing, and the count's now two balls, no strikes. I'll never forget when you pointed out to me, Brian Talley, there's no official rule on what's a swing no. and what's not. There's, there's, totally up to the umpires. There's no such thing as a check swing. Right. The, and a lot of people misunderstand that rule. A lot of people think, well, if they break their wrist or if the bat crosses the plate, none right. of that's true. The actual rule says, in the umpire's judgment, mm -hmm. did she swing or not? It's that simple. 2-0 misses high for ball three. It's a 3-0 count now to Elkin. Davis, though, sends one right over the plate for strike one. Three one, hit well but foul down the left side. Out of play for strike two and it's now a full count to Kaya Elkin. Shelby Trent on deck if she can reach. Down at the bottom of the Lady <laughs> Raider order. It's a full count, two away. Payoff pitch from Davis. This is in the dirt inside. Uncharacteristically now, three walks for Madison Davis to just two okay. strikeouts. And now Shelby Trent stands in in what is a must out here. You need this third out right now. Trent singled back in the second. Looks at the first pitch for ball one. Fortunately, Haley Heimer coming up hit one very well, but to left to end that second inning. She stands on deck. As Davis checks the wristband, delivers the 1-0. Creamed, but foul over towards the soccer field down the left side on the soccer field. Just lets you know how hard it was hit. Yeah. Young man picked that one up quick. He wants some GG's cupcakes. Absolutely. Surprised Davis didn't jump out of his seat and stumble down the steps. It's a 1-1 count now to Trent. Two away, runner on first is Elkin after the walk. Lady Cats trail it now one to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth. Madison steps in, deals the 1-1. One, one. This one misses away. Good job by Tuck to jump up and snag it. Counts now two balls, one strike. Perhaps starting to feel the wear and tear of all the pitches she had to throw yesterday. A masterpiece yep. a day ago as the 2-1 misses high for ball three. Usually when a pitcher starts leaving the ball up, they're mm -hmm. getting tired. And to be fair, has pitched a great game today. Absolutely. Once again, you take a defensive error away. 
It's a zero up on the scoreboard. Instead, Lady Raiders lead it one to nothing. As the three one from Davis misses high, like you said, leaving the ball up. Back to back walks, now runners on first and second. More significantly, back to back walks with two away. And now Haley Heimer stands in. Stranded runners on second and third, back in the second, walked in the first. She's got runners on first and second here with two away in the bottom of the fourth. Davis asks for a new ball, gets it. Heimer 40 RBI in the regular season. Team high 11 homers. You just can't afford to let another run score. No. First pitch inside. Did he catch the corner? Yes, strike one. <laughs> You have to ask, no declarations here. Oh, one from Davis, a butt from Heimer. Davis fields it, throw over to first, close play, safe. You mentioned it earlier, Brian Talley, they will drop a butt at any time. That one didn't particularly catch the Lady Cats off guard. It was fielded well by Davis. Reimer just beats it out down the line. Now the base is loaded. Those two walks with two away come back to bite. We'll see what Davis can do. Can she work the magic one more time here in the bottom of the fourth? Base is loaded, two away. Kelsey Sparks stands in. She is 0 for 2. Struck out the lead off the third. First pitch chopped over left side, right into the glove of Lexi Holloman. And Madison Davis does it again. But Warnies finally breaks through. Olivia Price gets the third on an error, comes into score on a squeeze. And after four, Lady Raiders lead Franklin Simpson one to nothing. You're listening to Franklin Simpson softball on WFKN. Fourth, here we are in the top of the fifth. Destiny Lowhorn leading things off for Franklin Simpson, 8-9 and then back to the top of the order with Maggie McBrayer, Kasten Thomas on deck in that nine spot. Destiny 0 for 1 so far in this one. Popped out to the first baseman, Bays back in the second. Lady Cat stranded, runners on the corners. First pitch to Lowhorn, looked at, must have missed either low or inside. We'll take it, it's ball one. Franklin Simpson is av they've had opportunities. They've stranded four base runners in this one. As the 1-0 to Lowhorn found back, makes it a 1-1 count. Lady Cats had three hits all in the first two innings. Went three up, three down in the third. Had Tuck reached on an error to lead off the fourth, but couldn't get anything going from there. 1-1 one, one to Lowhorn, swung on and missed. Breaking ball that time <coughs> from Gardner. Fool's destiny, and it counts one ball and two strikes. Both teams with three hits, both teams with one error. But the difference right now, one run for Warren East, none for Franklin Simpson. 1-2 on the way, misses away. Makes it two balls, two strikes, as we see now. The Logan County Lady Cougars piling in down on the left side. South Warren has been down there on the right side. They've got the next matchup here. That might be a the dandy one. Tournament. Yeah. It'll be a fine softball game. Winner of that one will take on the winner of this one tomorrow in the region championship. 2-2 two -two misses high. Thanks to count three balls and two strikes. Of course, the past two years, it's been Warren East, South Warren. Mm -hmm. South Warren winning two years ago. Of course, Warren East winning last year after beating Franklin Simpson in the semifinals. Payoff to Lowhorn, swung on and missed. It's the sixth strikeout in this one for Gardner. I came over here two years ago for that final, and I have never seen as many people. Aaron, Drew, and I got here about 45 minutes before game time. Mm -hmm. You want to know where we sit? I'm going to guess the parking structure. Where South probably. Warren's players Oh, wow. Right now. I would have just headed to the parking structure. <laughs> Thomas stands in, first pitch to her. I can't remember. Misses outside. It might have still been, I don't think it was open Was yet. it not open yet? I don't think it was. I think it was there, but it might not have been yeah, open. Yeah. It's a great place to watch a game. There are a few people over there right now. 
As the 1-0 misses away for ball two to Thomas. And you can watch it for free. So. Absolutely. Wow. They charge oh, really? five dollars to go in there. Hey, yeah. hey, they should. It might yeah. be the best seats in the house if you can't get right up close. 2-0 fouled back into the screen for strike one by Thomas. She struck out to end the second inning. Had a big RBI double yesterday right down the first base line. It's a 2-1 count right now from Katie Gardner. Pitch on its way. A check swing, but it's called strike two anyways on the outside corner. Makes the count two balls, two strikes to Thomas. Two, two. Looked at in the dirt. Counts now full. <coughs> one away here in the top of the fifth. Full count to Kasten Thomas. Franklin Simpson trails at one to nothing. Payoff pitch on its way. Swung on and missed. <laughs> that fastball that's up but just low enough to where you got to swing at it. Kasten chases back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the inning for Gardner. And they are now two away. Back to the top of the order, though, Maggie McBrayer. She is 0 for 2. Was 1 for 1, came in pinch hit, and got a hit off of Katie Gardner when Franklin Simpson fell 6 to nothing in the lone regular season matchup between these two teams. Fouls the first pitch off on a check swing in the area of Madison Davis over in the on-deck circle, fortunately. No harm. Counts now, no balls, one strike. Maggie 0 for 2 this afternoon. 0-1 on the way. Hit well in the no. center field. Lucy Patterson, though, she'll chase down just about anything. Does exactly that. And the side is retired in the top of the fifth. Franklin Simpson still trails it. One to nothing to Warren East. You're listening to the fourth region softball tournament on WFKN. It's the story of the game offensively. That's been it. It's one to nothing Warren East. Lucy Patterson leading things off. It's three, four, five for the Lady Raiders here in the home half of the fifth. First pitch from Madison Davis looked out on the outside corner for strike one. Davis has pitched extremely well, giving up three hits. The biggest issue, if you want to gripe about anything, four walks, although none of them have come back to bite. As the 0-1's hit into left, it's down. Arneman up with it. Lucy Patterson just so quick makes the turn without a moment of hesitation. She knew how to She's in the second. She was going to second base. Absolutely. It's her 48th hit, or would be, had 47 in the regular season. Just three of those doubles. She's got two this afternoon. She stands at second, nobody out for Jada Bays. Bays is 0 for 2, but there's a re reason she's in the cleanup spot in this dominant Warren East lineup. Chops one over to third, Lowhorn fields it, throw over to first in time. So Bays now 0 for 3, but that time a productive at bat as she moves the lead runner Patterson over to third. And as quick as she is, just about anything in the mm -hmm. infield is going to bring her home. Anything that gets by the catcher, uh, anything. Coach Cottle is going to go out and talk to Madison. Another big moment. She has had a lot of them in the past two days. Picked up the win against Barron County. Had gone three scoreless in this one before Price, who is now standing in, Olivia Price, reached on that error, eventually came in to score. That's the difference. It's one to nothing, Warren East, here in the bottom of the fifth. Price standing in, officially 0 for 2. Reached on an error and then popped out to Haley Fowler at second. It was the third out in the first. When she came up then, she had runners at second and third with two away. This time, Patterson standing at third with just one away. He's been one of the best in the state when it comes to hitting in these situations. 54 RBI in the regular season. A tall task for Madison Davis. But if I'm Franklin Simpson, there's only one person I'd want to face it. 
And she's standing in the circle. First pitch from Davis misses outside for ball one. Emma Young stands on deck. We'll see what Madison opts to do in this situation. 1-0 on the way. Misses low. Makes it two balls, no strikes. Madison, the four walks, uncharacteristic of her on the year coming into this one. 202 strikeouts to just 61 walks. 2-0 misses high. Makes it 3-0. Three zero count to Price. Davis deals, looked at on the outside corner. Price flinched as though she was about to get the stroll down to first. Warren Eastside doesn't agree with the call, but we'll take it. Counts now three balls, one strike to Price. Three one from Davis, foul back. So Davis works her way back in and the count's now full. You get a call like that on what 50-50 yep. could have been ball four. Got to take advantage. Looks over to the dugout, gets her sign. Madison Davis, the payoff pitch on the way to Olivia Price, fouled out of play. Anderson standing at third. She led off the inning with a double. Payoff pitch from Davis. Looked at in the dirt. Madison Davis's fifth walk on the afternoon. And there are now runners on the corners for Emma Young. 0 for 1 had the sacrifice bunt on the squeeze play as the lone RBI in this game. Price standing at first, assumes she'll try to make a move to second. Does so on the first pitch. Strolls over uncontested. Once again, when I say stroll, I'm talking Brian Talley trying yeah. to make his move from first to second. Yes. So now two runners in scoring position. Price stands at second, Patterson at third. It's an 0-1 count to Young. Davis deals, but they go for the squeeze, squeeze again. This time the play to the plate. Tuck drops the throw. That's why you don't go home. That's such a And now making play. her way to second is Young. And Warren East building momentum. They lead it two to nothing. Emma Young with both RBI in this one. Did not play in the first game between the two teams. She's been the difference in this one. Price over to third. Not nearly out of danger yet. Katie Gardner standing in, 0 for 1. She goes to bunt, same play. Davis fields this one, gonna throw it over to first. So what should have been the third out of the inning instead is just the second. And Price comes in to score their third run in the game. And Warren East leads it three to nothing. Number one, Kaya Elton. So two runs scored now in the fifth for Warren East. They lead it three to nothing, now two away. Young standing at third. Kaya Elkin stands in. Looks at the first pitch away for ball one. She walked in the fourth, hit into a fielder's choice in the second. which should have been, as I said, the third out of the inning. Once again, defense comes back to bite Franklin Simpson. It's been the Achilles heel all year long. A beautiful 1-0 breaking ball from Davis. A check swing from Elkin, and it's called strike one. One, one count. Pitch from Davis. Change up in there for strike two on the corner. One ball, two strikes, two away. Warren East now leads it three to nothing in the bottom of the fifth. Franklin Simpson just trying to stay within striking distance. One-two from Davis. 
cool. fouled. Out of play over to the soccer field. Davis, one of four Franklin Simpson seniors. She is pitching her heart out. Trying to retire the side here. One, two count to Elkin. Change up, hangs up high for ball two. Two, two count. Davis deals, popped up. Shallow center field, it's trouble. Thomas comes in to make the play. Great effort. Able to track it down and snag it for the third out, but Warren East tacks on two more after five. They lead it three to nothing. You're listening to Lady Cat Softball at the fourth region tournament on WFKN. Again, this is when you're gonna have to do it. Two, three, four coming up to lead off the inning. Madison. One for two this afternoon, doubled in the first, struck out in the third. Katie Gardner with seven strikeouts in the circle for Warren East. First pitch to Davis, looked at in the dirt for ball one. Arneman on deck, Kaylee Tuck to follow her. They've been the something. heart and soul of the lineup. You're going to get something started. <laughs> you got to do it right here, top of the lineup. Six outs left. 1-0 count to Davis here in the top of the sixth. Pitch inside again, makes the count. Two balls, no strikes. Franklin Simpson, three hits, all of them in the first two innings. Did have base runners in the fourth after Kaylee Tuck reached on an error. Franklin Simpson in this one has stranded four base runners. 2-0, a changeup that has Madison fooled. Makes the count, two balls, one strike. She wanted to stick that one over the left field fence. Yes. Two one count now to Madison. Gardner deals. Misses outside. Nice job trying to frame it by Stringfield, but qu can't quite pull it back across the plate. Counts now three balls, one strike. Gardner deals the three one. Popped up to right, coming in to get it as Price. She has it. There's now one away here in the top of the sixth. Perhaps the final at bat of what has been an excellent career for Miss Madison Davis. Yep. Gracie Arnhem standing in. She's got a lot of at bats left, just a freshman. 380 average on the year. She's 0 for 2 this afternoon. Got to find a way to reach here. First pitch in the dirt outside for ball one. Kaylee Tuck on deck. She's 0 for 2 as well. Haley just a sophomore. Arneman calls time, steps out of the box. Mentioned the four seniors, Danielle Coates, Destiny Lohorn, Katie Hunter, the other three besides Madison Davis. As the 1-0 to Arneman off the plate, makes the count two balls, no strikes. Bright future for this Lady Cats program, especially when you look up and down the order with Arneman, Tuck, Utley, Fowler, all coming back, solid bats in the lineup as the 2-0 is in there on the outside corner for strike one. Even Maggie McBrayer at the top of the order. She's come on strong basically out of nowhere here in the back half of the season, another freshman. 2-1 on the way, this one. Out of play down the left side. Over towards the bullpen. It counts now two balls, two strikes to Arneman. Two-two pitch on the way. Will it fall in center field? Patterson wow. giving chase. And a web gym, if we've ever seen one, wow. lays out, makes the grab. Yep. And she didn't scoop it. She snagged it. A little jump shot celebration oh, out in you. center. She's a heck of a hooper, let me tell you. Yep. Makes an excellent catch that time. 
There's not a lot of players on this field on either side that would get to that ball no. outside of Miss Patterson. You won't find many players, not just in this region, but in the state that make that play. Lucy Patterson, certainly one of them. Another young lady with a bright future, just a sophomore. As Kaylee Tuck stands in, first pitch to her popped up. And there to get it is the shortstop Heimer. So Franklin Simpson, their really best opportunity to try to get something late. Davis in the circle for Franklin Simpson. Three runs on the scoreboard. But once again, <coughs> just an excellent game from Miss Davis, pitching what is starting to look like her final game as a Lady Cat. Franklin Simpson will have three outs to work with in the top of the seventh. The rally not out of the picture. And after what we saw yesterday, can truly say anything is possible as the first pitch from Davis misses low inside for ball one to Trent. Madison has given up four hits as the 1-0 misses for ball two. Has only struck out to five walks. What really broke this game open has been the issue for Franklin Simpson all year, errors, an error out in right. Allowed Olivia Price to advance all the way to third on what should have been a fly ball out. She would come in to score the first run of the game and then Warren East tacks on two more in the bottom of the fifth. <coughs> They lead it 3-0 here in the bottom of the sixth. And it's a 3-0 count to Shelby Trent. Davis deals the 3-0 over the plate for strike one. And as you noted, Brian Talley, we talked about it a little bit. Her arm probably on the verge of falling off right now, taking everything gotta, she's got. It's got to feel like jello. Oh, this yes. 3-1 misses high. Like you said, that's how you can tell it. So Shelby Trent out of the nine hole has reached all three times she's come up to bat now six walks from Madison Davis now Haley Heimer stands in she's one for two singled in the fourth flew out to left in the second and drew a walk to start the game back in the first she's got a runner on first and Trent nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth first pitch from Davis a breaking ball that misses away for ball one At this point, you know she doesn't want to come out just trying to finish the game. As the 1-0 on its way, this one looked at all the way on the inside corner for a strike one. <clears throat> Davis making her 30th appearance, 25th start of her senior season. Bunt dropped by Heimer, this one Bounces back into foul territory. Makes the count one ball, two strikes. It's a one-two count to Heimer. Pitch from Davis. Hit well, but foul over towards the... Warren East bullpen that's being used as a warm-up area right now for Logan County. It's going to be a great matchup. We've had a good one here. Next game, Logan County versus South Warren. Lady Cougars the 13th. District champion, South Warren, the 14th district champions. 1-2 on the way from Davis. Swung on and missed. Nice to see that change up yep. in perfect form that time. It's the third strikeout for Davis. First out here in the bottom of the sixth. Kelsey Sparks standing in. 0 for 3 so far this afternoon. Led the Lady Raiders in average in the regular season. 537. First pitch this time misses low and away for ball one. We saw Madison do that yesterday against one of the best hitters in the region in Hayden Sutherland. Came in with a brilliant average for Barron County, was 0 for 4. And the 7-3 win for Franklin Simpson. 1-0 looked at, called strike one. Was, in my mind, I'm thinking, that's a perfect pitch. Yeah. Can we get a grunt at the very least? Sam, we just get to play some more wait and see. Fortunately, we see a strike up on the scoreboard, and the count's 1-1. One and one. Davis delivers the 1-1, popped up, 
Oh, no. Deep infield, now shallow outfield, just on the edge of the grass. <laughs> Lexi Holloman has been busy, busy, busy over there at short. She makes the play. There are now two retired for Lucy Patterson. She has had a well of a game, had the collision out in center field in the first. Shook it off. She's had two doubles and made an excellent diving catch out in her position of center field in the top half of this inning. She stands in with two away. Trent standing at first after she drew the walk to lead off the inning. First pitch to Patterson. Looked at low for ball one. Lucy, as I mentioned, part of the Lady Raiders girls basketball team. As the 1-0 is hit over to short, Holloman up with it, throw over to first, close, and she got her. Good play. To throw out Lucy Patterson, yeah. that's an accomplishment in itself. So the side is retired, and now Franklin Simpson down to their last three outs. As we enter the top of the seventh, Warren East leading three to nothing. You're listening to Lady Cats off the fourth region tournament, the upset of the year in the first round over Barron County. A 7-3 win over the best offense in the state in the regular season. Danielle Coates leading things off, hit into center field. Ball hangs up, Wynn was pushing it out, and there's Lucy Patterson. Makes an easy break on it. I tell you what, she makes it look very, very she easy does. out there in center. Very gifted athlete. Coates retired for the first out of the inning. Now Haley Fowler stepping in. Haley one for two, singled back in the second. Lady Cat strung together a couple of hits in that second inning. First pitch looked at high from Gardner for ball one. Stranded runners on the corners. That was the best scoring opportunity. Had Kitchen standing at second in the first after a double for Madison Davis and back-to-back -back strikeouts from Gardner ended that threat humbly. As the 1-0 from Gardner looked at this time on the outside corner for strike one. Katie has been her normal dominant self, although it's it, it's just felt like she's been a little more vulnerable than usual. She has. Lady Cats have made contact as the one, one is looked at for strike two. She's got seven strikeouts, and I hate to say just seven strikeouts, but when you consider she struck out 15 <laughs> batters in just six innings the last time these two teams faced off, that's certainly an improvement. Yes, absolutely. And the 2-1 to There's Fowler in. leaks into right. Gotta hurt. Haley Fowler, two hits. And something she'll remember forever here at WKU Softball Field. You can tell somebody in a region game, I got two hits off of the best pitcher maybe in the state. Not only that, Brian Talley, three times up, she reaches all three times. Can the Lady Cats make something out of it? Matty Utley wanted to make something out of that pitch. A little life here. Catches nothing but the breeze for strike one. Matty did have a single back in the second after Haley's single. Both were eventually stranded. 0-1 pitch popped up right into the glove of the catcher. Stringfield makes a nice over the shoulder catch. And Franklin Simpson now one out away. And Shelby Cottle gonna come in to pinch hit. A humongous spot to step into, just a freshman. And it just shows the potential of this Lady Cats team. Shelby, one of six freshmen on this Lady Cats roster, including Gracie Arneman, Haley Fowler, Lexi Holloman, Sharika Kitchens, Maggie McBrayer, all of them yeah. playing regularly over the entire course of the season. Team is going to have to uh, develop some pitching. Pitching's the but, thing. Uh, Anna Arthur standing in the way. Yeah. But there's a lot of other pieces there. The bats will be there. I can assure you of that next year. First pitch in there for strike one from Gardner. And a fantastic group of seniors, only four. But the accomplishments of them of course, Coach and Davis been with the team for six years at this level is the only one in there for strike two, advancing to the region tournament every single one of those years. 
Lady Cats now one strike away from going home. 0-2 count to Cottle. Two away here in the top of the seventh. Gardner deals the 0-2. Swung on and missed. And the Warren East Lady Raiders advance to the region four championship. Once again, the reigning champs will have an opportunity to defend their title. They'll take on the winner of Logan County and South Warren. That game coming up next. But for now, we'll take a break, come back, wrap this one up, and wrap up what ultimately, I would say, has been another success.